You now we want to think about a solar module that there are several solar cells connected in series. And what might happen if one of these uh, cells is covered by a leaf or that we have a shadow uh, or even that this cell might be uh, damaged and uh, does not contribute to the power generation. What you can see here in these two uh, pictures on the uh, left hand side, you see this uh, hot spot or this broken glass, this burnt hole uh, due to a heat so this cell has heated up due to a technical problem the cell has consumed the power of the other cells and that's that, that has led to a small uh, fire or this heat and we have this this burn and even the the front glass is broken you can see this these very small cracks of the glass on the right hand side you see an uh, IR uh, measurement of uh, a solar module. You see here this hot spot, uh, the interconnection between the cells, so the wires between the cells, and this is a very hot spot with a temperature of 125 degrees. The overall module has a temperature of about 40 degrees Celsius, but this uh, spot over there um, has a very high temperature as there is a high current flow and this might result you can see this here on the back sheet of a module that we get this burnt holes that the heat uh, is uh, resulting in a damage of our module and now what we will have a look at is how does this work where does it come from and what could we do to prevent uh, this uh, from occurring Let's uh, think about uh, the situation that we have, uh, let's say, uh, six cells which are interconnected in, in series. Um, so we have first cell, second cell, the third cell, fourth cell, and the fifth cell of our, um, of our string or our module. So that are the unshaded cells. They operate normally. And then we add one last cell, cell number six, to our uh, interconnection in series. And that is the coverage cell or the damaged cell. So that is the cell which is uh, operating not in the optimal, um, con under optimal conditions. And now what we will have a look at is how does the IV curve of this look like. Um, so what we know is, of course, uh, the current through all the cells must be the same. So we have this uh, this current uh, running through the system, uh, and the voltage is the sum of the voltage of each cell. So what we have is, let us add the IV characteristic of one unshaded cell. So uh, let's think about this, that this is the IV characteristic of one unshaded cell so then this continues something like this so that is the one unshaded cell and of course uh, how does this uh, looks like if we have five cells uh, in, in interconnected in series so we are over there that the voltage is increasing the current uh, keeps unchanged so that is the IV characteristic we get for our four uh, five cells interconnected in series so that are five unshaded cells and then we add the IV characteristic of our system uh, of, of this shaded cell so that is the shaded cell so this is the IV curve uh, let's say that that looks something like this, that we have a smaller current and uh, we get this, the UOC over there, UOC and ISC of this uh, shaded cell. And of course, what we need to add is we need to add this IV characteristic to negative voltages that is looking something like, like this. And now we have to think about what is the, the overall IV characteristic of our system with these six cells interconnected in, in series. Um, we know uh, that the voltage is increasing. So what we get is uh, this the voltage over there. That's the UOC 
of our overall system and the, the, I, the, the current of the system must be between these two values, between the ISC of our um, shaded and unshaded cells. So we have to derive where is the, uh, the ISC of the overall system. Um, so what we do is we flip our red curve at the y-axis and uh, check where do both characteristics uh, cross. So what do we do? We have a short circuit, so we interconnect these cells that we have a, an overall voltage U of o volts. Um, so that's the uh, short circuit. And now we flip our, uh, our red characteristic that we get something like this. This dashed line and then we have this slide and here both characteristics cross and that is uh, that is the ISC of our overall system ISC um, and now we can can draw the uh, the combined IV uh, combined IV characteristic that looks something like this and then we go down roots to UOC so that is the IV characteristic of five unshaded cells and one shaded cell and of course what we see is um, that this characteristic um, is um, or leads to the effect that the shaded cell is again operating with a negative voltage because what we know is the overall voltage must be positive so the voltage of this system over there that is this voltage is positive and of course, our shaded cell is uh, running in reverse bias, so the shaded cells are the unshaded cells run in forward bias, but the the shaded cell runs in in reverse bias, so U is smaller than uh, zero. And in this case, again, what we get is that this cell is uh, consuming uh, the power. Uh, the power is negative. Uh, and that, of course, leads to a uh, heat production that we get heat. Uh, this cell takes the power generated by the five unshaded cells and um, we can uh, derive that the power is, is highly negative and we, we, we lose a lot of, uh, of power. So the power uh, is dissipated uh, in, the, in, the, in the shaded cell. What you can do is you can add the um, MPP racked angle. So if we have five unshaded cells, we are somewhere here. So that is the racked angle of the situation if we have five unshaded cells. So that is the overall racked angle. If we have uh, our system with uh, five uh, unshaded cells and one shaded cell, we have a different condition. That is the weak characteristic somewhere here. That is uh, the MPP of our um, cell, of our shaded cell and uh, five unshaded cells. So that is the rect angle uh, in this, uh, under this condition. And you see that the area of this blue rect angle is significantly smaller. And the difference between the areas, that is the, the power which is dissipating in this uh, in this shaded cell and that is the amount of heat which which is generated and that might lead to these hotspots or uh, the breaking of our module so what could we do to prevent this uh, happening so what we do is we add a so-called bypass diode to our cell which um, is able to um, to reduce this, this effect. So keep in mind uh, the solar cell, how does it look like in this simplified model? So we have a source for the photo current, then we have this uh, diode, um, and then we have a resistance in parallel, and we have this resistance in uh, series. So that is our solar cell. Um, and uh, that's the that's the current. And what we now do is uh, we add a, a bypass diode which has um, um, a different orientation, so that this uh, this additional uh, diode. Let's let's add this diode in this opposite uh, uh, 
erection so that this diet helps uh, the cell from preventing of uh, consuming a lot of power um, so under normal operations uh, each of the cells so that is the that is our cell operates in forward bias so there is no there's no problem in the operation but uh, if our cell is shaded then this this uh, bypass diet over there on the right hand side bypass diet this uh, contributes to the um, so we add this connection over there so this bypass diet can can contribute uh, of course, uh, due to this opposite polarity of this bypass diet uh, that is able to uh, conduct and uh, the current can run this way instead of running through our solar cell. And um, then we can prevent uh, this uh, heating or we can reduce this effect of power loss in our cell if this, uh, if this cell would be uh, operating in reverse bias. What is the AIW characteristic of this uh, cell with a bypass diet? So uh, we have the Y axis and we have the voltage over there. So that's the voltage, that is the current. And what we get is as the IV characteristic of this system, of course, under no uh, normal conditions, we have something like this that is ISC. And then we have oh, somewhere over here that's UOC of this cell under these uh, conditions. And what we then have is this this the cell with a bypass diet um, looks something like this: that the current is increasing if the voltage is negative, and there is minus UOC something like this. So that is the IV characteristic of our cell with a bypass diet. Uh, without the bypass diet, what would happen? The uh, characteristic would like this uh, look like this, so that this um, characteristic will would be uh, continued to the left hand side. But with the using of this bypass diet, so that is the effect of the bypass diet that we have uh, an increase of the uh, of the current. Uh, and then we have uh, we are close to this uh, U minus U O C value, which is uh, close, close to this uh, to this uh, to this value. So how does it look like for our small example? So again, we have our cells interconnected in series. So first, second cell, third cell, fourth, and fifth cell and then we have our shaded or covered cells so that are the good cells and what we then do is we add this uh, this bypass diet in opposite uh, direction so that this is the diet in, in this way and uh, so what is now happening we have or what what is the IV curve um, in our case, so we have again the situation that we have this IV uh, characteristic. What do we get is, let's just quickly add the voltage and the current. So what we have is we have uh, our five unshaded cells. So uh, what we get is that is the IV, IV curve of our uh, five unshaded cells. So somewhere Somewhere here, that is the uh, weak characteristic. And now we have this uh, shaded uh, cell or covered cell. So this this uh, weak characteristic we have just talked about. That's uh, this this slope of curve. And now what we need to do is we need to derive what is the overall voltage uh, of our um, system and what is the overall current. We know that that the voltage is somewhere here, the UOC is something like there. What is the open circuit voltage? So what we just do is we flip our red characteristic that is looking something like this. And then we can derive uh, the, uh, the operating point, the ISC, and this is somewhere like somewhere here. And what we finally get is the IV curve 
the overall IV curve looks something like, like this. So, so we get different characteristic. This is now this, and uh, then all the crosses, and uh, we cross over there, and then this is the, that is the IV curve of our system. That's the IV characteristic. Characteristic. And um, of course, this has a different slope of this of this curve due to the bypass diet. So under normal condition, if this cell over there wouldn't be shaded, then all cells would operate at forward bias. So uh, this uh, this uh, bypass diet wouldn't uh, conduct uh, or participate. But if this cell is shaded, what does this mean? Of course, then this cell is operated in reverse bias and then this uh, diet would conduct and the curve would run uh, this way and then uh, through this, bi the, this bypass diet. So this bypass diet is in forward bias um, and the current runs through this bypass diet and we get uh, uh, this IV characteristic. And of course, this reduces uh, the power which is uh, dissipating in our uh, system because uh, we are, you see this here this the slope of this uh, bypass diet or, or this uh, cell with the bypass diet that the the power which is dissipating is significantly smaller compared to the situation we have had uh, if we don't have this um, the bypass diet this would be the uh, IV characteristic of our unshaded cell with a stashed a line which is continued and of course then we would have then then we would get this uh, IV curve we've seen uh, previously and um, so the bypass diet helps of course to reduce uh, power losses and that's the idea of why we use bypass diets in, in solar modules however of course in practice uh, what you don't do is that you have a bypass diet per cell so that uh, this that we do this this way um, that we have a bypass diet for each cell that doesn't make sense because it's too expensive and it doesn't make sense from the economic point of view. So what you typically have is that uh, you take about 15 to 80 cells and um, add one bypass diet for this, uh, these cells uh, in a solar module uh, which is based on silicon cells. So if you have a uh, PV module with uh, 72 uh, cells which are connected um, then of course we have four bypass uh, diets which are uh, integrated in this in this module to reduce the the power loss effects and to reduce uh, possible um, hot spots um, so if one cell is shaded in this string of uh, let's say 18 cells then this uh, bypass diet from this shaded string is forward biased and conducts the current and all the other uh, bypass diets uh, are reverse biased and they have they don't have any impact and that is important if you uh, set up a pv system and you have obstacles uh, in particular for pv systems installed on, on a rooftop um, then uh, this is very important that you can reduce the power losses uh, by the use of these uh, bypass diodes. So let's have a look how does this look like in a PV module. Um, here you can see an example of a PV module uh, and let's quickly add uh, the bypass diode. So what we have is we have these cells, 10 cells which are interconnected we have 10 cells in a row and then six cells from bottom to top so 60 cells in total and if we add these bypass diets so let's quickly add them we have the connection coming somewhere from here uh, and then of course the bypass diet that is in, in this direction we have a second bypass diet connecting these two uh, strings and finally the bypass diet over there in this in this manner and uh, of course what is now the idea of this uh, of this interconnection so that is uh, the plus and that is minus uh, and what is now happening if we have coverage uh, in case of uh, shadow or whatever so under normal conditions everything would be fine of course um, so the IV curve, let's 
quickly draw the IV curve under normal conditions. We have, this is the IV characteristic. So that is the, the voltage U. And what we can also check in a couple of minutes, we will also check the power uh, through MPP uh, characteristic. So in this case, without any shading, that would be the, the IV curve of our uh, PV module, everything is fine. If you wouldn't have these uh, red marked um, bypass diodes, so under bad conditions, we, we would just have 60 cells connected in series and we would have a shadow. So let's think about that this shell here on the right hand side that is covered um, uh, due to a shadow, a tree, a leaf, uh, whatever, a chimney, antenna. So that is the cell which is covered. Um, and what does this mean now? Uh, if we won't have uh, bypass diodes, we would have this slope of curve so that we have this drop um, without the bypass diet and then we would have something like, like this. So that is the situation without, bi without bypass diets. Um, and the blue curve, of course, this is uh, without shading. And uh, what we also get is uh, in red, if we have these uh, shading and we have three bypass diodes, what does this mean? We would get this red slope of curve that we can reduce the, the losses and we get something like, like this. So that is the slope of this curve. So that is the IV characteristic uh, shading. So with uh, shading. And we have uh, at least three bypass diets. So we can reduce uh, the power loss. Uh, in this case, uh, this, this uh, diet, the first one here of this first string that is in, in forward bias, all the other uh, diets are in reverse bias, so they don't contribute. But this diet here, this first one, um, this is in forward bias, so the current run does not run through these cells, but the r runs through this bypass diet, and then the current runs through all the other cells. Uh, and of course, we have a reduction of power, but the power reduction isn't uh, that large in our case. Finally, we'll have a look at the power voltage characteristics. So let's draw the voltage on the x-axis and now the power on the y-axis so power is of course current times voltage how does it look like so without any shading of course you would have a perfect pv uh, characteristic so power voltage characteristic something like this uh, and then we have this this drop so that is our mpp without shading so perfect conditions and now how does it look like first of all uh, again the situation let's draw this in black what is the situation if we have uh, no bypass diet and again this this cell here on the uh, lower left hand side is, is covered so that would be the uh, power voltage characteristic something like this we got this uh, spot and then or this peak and then something like like this so that is the uh, power voltage characteristic without the bypass diodes. Um, so of course you see this, this is our MPP, which is on a totally different voltage value, rather small. Um, and of course the overall power is even smaller. So we have a drop of power no, or loss of power uh, due to uh, the missing bypass diodes if one cell is, is covered and this cell is in reverse bias and, and, and consumes the power which is generated by all the other cells. Uh, and then the last situation, if we have these three bypass diodes, what do we get? That's this uh, power voltage characteristic. Something like this. We have this increase, then we have the maximum and then we, of course we have the, this drop. Uh, so that is the situation if we have shading and three bypass diets and shading. 
Uh, so the power is uh, maximum power point is somewhere over there. That is the MPP with three uh, with three bypass diets. So again, the, the power runs through this diet and then through the cells. And uh, of course, we, the power loss isn't that large. We have this this drop of the power somewhere here. That is the power loss uh, in this in this part. Um, and of course, what, what you have to keep in mind is that the, the inverter has uh, has to identify this this MPP. So the the, the algorithm or strategy uh, to to identify this maximum power point. So under normal conditions, what is happening? The MPP is somewhere here. That is UMPP. So and if this uh, cell is covered, then the the inverter, which is um, uh, responsible for the identification of this maximum power point must uh, check this range and step over there that we have uh, this UMPP uh, shaded. But if we wouldn't have this bypass diet, so the inverter must should be able to identify this this position of the voltage. So what is the best or the voltage with the highest uh, power so that's the, uh, the that's the MPP if we wouldn't have any bypass diet so the inverter should have or must identify this this voltage which is hardly of course to identify because you have to switch or you have to decrease the voltage significantly but with this uh, uh, bypass diets we have just a small shift of this MPP voltage and the inverter can identify this position here on this uh, x-axis rather easy and then we have this MPP uh, otherwise of course if the inverter wouldn't be able to identify this point and could just operate over there then even the uh, MPP uh, power wouldn't be significantly uh, smaller even without the bypass diets. So under normal conditions everything is fine on this blue curve MPP and that is again the reason why we use this uh, bypass diet. So in this case 2.3 bypass diets with, uh, um, within our solar module and then the power loss uh, isn't that significantly large and um, we can handle this these losses.